Okay, um, still working on this pattern. I want to tell you, anybody that thinks that pattern making is simple and you just plop some wood together, you got another thought coming, my friends. It's a lot of work to get it right, to get a good pattern made. And um, the mention, like I mentioned, I've been working on this thing. I don't really know how many hours I got, but what's my time worth? You go to a pattern maker, they're going to charge you 50 to 80 to $100 an hour. So you think about that. $100 an hour, 30, 30 hours, $3,000. Make this pattern. Match plate and everything. I got more than 30 hours in it. I don't know what they charge, but anyway. I've got to turn up. I bought, I'm, you know, you already seen it. Glue the wood together. Paper in the middle. And... Um, I made some marks on the on the end here, and wanted to mention that. See these things here? These are pretty cool to have. They're scribers, and primarily woodworkers use them, and I've used them for pattern making. This one here, I've had for years and years and years. Uh, down in Florida this winter past, I got these from Conrad uh, Muller, uh, and. Um, that's Earl, Earl's son, and uh, I'm really happy to get them. And I have, you know, set them for different lengths for whatever I'm working on. So you, basically what you do is, like this one was set, to scribe this line down the center here. If I can bring it right up there, you can see that line. And you scribe it, you just, just drag it along, drag it along, drag it along. Now, the one thing I didn't mention in some of the other videos was that when you're doing a when you're doing a layout pattern layout there it goes I wrecked it no when you're doing pattern layout and you, you don't use a pencil I mean you can you, I do use a pencil and I and I take them and I take the pencil and after I've scribed the line sometimes I'll take it and just very lightly kind of let it go along the line and so it just de defines it a little bit better so you can see it. my eyes aren't as good as they used to be and um, on the front here, you do the same thing, just very lightly in the scribe mark. But um, I use a, a knife, always use a knife, because the knife is about the sharpest line you can get, and um, get more definite, just more definite. Just use it just like you would a pencil, but do it with the, with the knife. And all your layout lines should be done with a knife. At least on pattern making. Then you just take this and sharpen the pencil. I go over here in the pencil sharpener, which is actually belt sander. It works perfectly good. Get a point on it on a harder pencil. These I like these soft pencils, but this, this is hard hard one for this. And then just very lightly, just go along. And if you want to do the corners. If I did the mark, make centering. Another thing, take a, anything, straight edge. Close to the corners you can, mark, mark, X, make the center. You don't take the, you know, these, these are basic layout stuff. You want to learn more about layout, watch Mr. Pete. He'll tell you all about it. You know, I don't have to go over it again. That's it, you see, you put the marks on there. Now, I'm going to put this plate on the end. And I don't want to make another plate, and this will work. I'm not going to turn this part of it here. I'm only going to start right about here and turn down to between the jaws. I need the center section. And what I'm making, so we get clear, is that we'll go to this now. Uh, part It's part of this, and I need to make... A core prints that match these round pieces here and uh, I said I'm going to turn up match that because well, well why well this is you see it split in the middle this uh, was done in the uh, milling machine I, I made the blocks blocks to size them and everything uh, perfectly square machined it with a fly cutter in a mill 
boop, 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 fly cutter. Then I set it up and lined up this part because what that's going to be is, see, it's like half the mold. And these pieces, which were the pieces I said, hey, I'm going to keep as a secret, they go in there like that, you see. And if you look at it, with two of them on there, you're seeing that there's the top half of the cylinder. There's the top half of the cylinder right there. Okay, and this is where the steam chest would be up here on the top. Now, I need a core print in there. So, what I'm going to do is turn it up out of this and glue it in there. And let it stick out, and that's my core print. After I, of course, I'm going to split these in half. In fact, I'll do it right now. Watch, you, know, you can watch it. But um, I turned them up, four pieces. And this is what's left over from the big one. Remember, I, if you look back at that video, I had a long piece that I made, and I turned it and everything. And uh, that was on either end here. You know, they, they were here. And I turned them out, and then there it is. And, of course, it split apart when I took it apart. Now I'm going to see if I can attempt to split this. But before I do that, I wanted to talk about this thing. I'm going to screw this on the outside. Now, Mr. Pete liked my plate idea. And just in case he's watching, um, why I used this is back in the day, years ago, I had a metal one. It's around here someplace. I don't know where it is. I'll find it and put it with my stuff. But I made this one up. And it'll work. Um, I had this stuff fly apart. You put the center in there, and you're trying to keep the center in, and you know you push it in, and the first thing you know, that center acts as like a wedge and <laughs> pops it apart. So that was a dangerous thing to do. So what I decided to do was make a plate on there that holds it kind of together. And of course, I you know I have to get past the screws here. So somewhere's over here when the screws go in, I don't want to be hitting the screws, you know, and go down. <coughs> <clears throat> and uh, turn this up to the jaws, to the right diameter, and then take it apart. I got two, two halves I got for, uh, for something else. And um, uh, I could actually turn one of these, if I had enough of it, turn half of that and make it a core box. I could make the core box that way. But I'm going to make a regular conventional square block core box and show you how that's made. And I'm even going to make some cores for you. Uh, now, Mr. Pete uses, um, he used um, um, water glass, which is, uh, what is it called, silicate something, whatever, Sil sodium silicate, and you put that in there with the CO2. I thought it was pretty clever that he used uh, an old um, CO2 uh, air conditioner, um, air, air conditioner, yeah, CO2 um, fire extinguisher. It almost sounds same. It sounds the same. You got to remember, get a little old. Anyway. Um, but I use the regular conventional core binders, and, and I was told by the core makers that, or the pattern, the, the foundries, that uh, there's not much shelf life on a CO2 core. So I decided to go with the regular stuff, which I have, and you mix it with the sand, same thing, put it in there, and it binds up automatically by itself. It just, you don't need CO2. And uh, to get that stuff is kind of hard. You've got to buy five gallon drums, and it's expensive. And it goes bad, so I was able to get it in one gallon cans, and uh, that worked out pretty good. And I, I'll show you how to make that core. I'm not going to make them for the iron. Let the core, let the foundry do them. But I do them for the bronze and for aluminum. I make my own cores. It works out better that way. The, the, the Amish people like to make their own. So anyway, I'm going to screw this on the end. I'm going to go over to lay, turn it. It's same as the other thing. So you already seen how I did that, set it up, and everything. And uh, then we're going to come back, we're going to split this thing in half, split it in half, try to chop it. And then we have all the pieces, and then we got to put it all together. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. One thing I forgot to mention when talking about this in the plate. Get center lines on the plate. I mean, that makes sense, don't it? Have center lines on it. And then the two screw holes, and then the center for the center in the middle. Now, anybody's a carpenter and anybody that ever hung a door, you have one of these things here. You put that in the, in the hole, and you wrap it, and it makes a center punch on the, on the wood, on the door, door jam. 
And the reason why you do that is because if you didn't, and when you went to put the screw in, it might go all center a little bit, follow the grain, and then your door's all bleh. Okay? Well, same thing could happen here. So what I do is you line this up and you put that in the mark like that and you whack it with the hammer and it makes a punch there and then you put your screw right there. It stops it from um, going off. We'll get the drill over here. And you use some short screws, you don't need long ones. And my, my, I might want to credit old timer, neighbor, right next door, Jack Morgan. He was a carpenter, and he had a lot of little fancy doodads, and that, I learned about this thing in the 50s. So now I've, I've got one. I found it. Uh, they sell them now at the Home Depot. Just get one. They're really good to have. And uh, i got to find a screw. I don't know what happened to the screws. Two screws. Two screws. Had a guy one time on my van. Put all stuff in the van, right? And I got windows on the side of the doors. Like the doors have windows in them. You know, the doors are right over here. So you, we're moving a lot of stuff, and he jammed that thing in, man. You couldn't get a finger in there. And he goes to this with the doors. He goes, boom. The both windows pop right out. Boom. million pieces all over the parking lot. He said, oh, it's no problem. It's no problem. It just takes two screws. Two screws. You take two screws. Two screws. What about the window? It cost $169 for one. So it's two, almost $350 for two windows because he had to push everything in there. Well, you live and learn. And anyway... Two screws, so I still use that. Two screws, two screws, yeah, two screws. I got two screws. Okay. Phillips head screws. My ex-wife used to call them Phillips set, S-E-T. She didn't know. Anyway, Phillips set. Okay, and you can line it up on your marks. So you want to. Or your mark gets set if you want to put a little extra in there so you can find it. Yeah, it's hard to do. I've got to use this here. I tell you, this is a lot of work, man. I like doing it, though. Get done on the lathe. And that's what we got. And this now you can't, you know, stay away from this where I chucked it to drive it. And there's this. I mean, there's different ways to do it. Mr. Pete did it with a centers, between centers, and had like one of them, I never had one, one of them things with the point in it to drive it. They're pretty good to have, but I don't have one, so this way I'd do it. A little less wood you got left over. All right, you just take the end off. That ain't rocket science here, right? You just take it off. There it is, done. Let me put it away. I'm going to need it when I go to do the stack, which I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to do the smoke stack we talked about. And uh, now, you just saw cut them off. Once you saw cut them off, this is scrap. This is scrap. I'm just going to saw cut it off. Now, I'm going to show you how to saw cut it. Come on, man. You know how to saw cut stuff. Salt cut off. You know how to do salt cut. You don't need me to show you. Anyway, now that's your going to be the halves that are going to go in here. That just fits in there nice. Fits in there perfect. That's the way I want it. A little tight. Now we're going to split it. The good old split. And uh, uh, Mr. Pete used a knife. I'm using a putty knife. It's the same kind of knife. It's just a putty knife for putty. He used that because it's a wedge. This one's going to be a little bit tougher because there it goes. <coughs> Ta da! Two halves. And you can get that paper off if you want. I'll do it on the disc sander here. Now, oh, come on, you know how to do that too. You don't need to see that. Oh, 
I like some of these videos, the guys never talk, they just show. And they play ballet music. Ballet music, you imagine this? Ballet music, okay. Oh, we're not into ballet music. I'm micing it up. You can mic wood, believe it or not. That's good. All right, that represents this core here. Like, if you were to see a half section, that would be the core coming through, of course, up to, up to this point. Now, I could take this, mount it on a match plate, a little more match plate, make a box around it, pour the repro over the top of it, and get a core, half a core box. And then you have to glue the cores together, which is another operation. So the one I'm going to make, I'm going to put two pieces of wood together, I'm going to bore it out, and have the two halves, and you just ram the, the sand in there, and then you pull it, when it sets up, you pull it apart, knock it a little bit, and there you have a core. Let's just give you an idea here how it's going to look. This is going to go like this. This is a big jigsaw puzzle, right? Rubik's Cube. There. And, of course, the part I just made is going to extend into there, out to there. And there's your cylinders. Okay? That's how it's made. That's how it's done. How it's made. Look on TV. I can write that book. Anyway, that goes in there. We're going to take this and glue it in there like that up to the right length. And then that becomes the pattern. Then, once I get it all glued together, I'm going to put some more paper on this, line it up real good, put these two together, paper and everything, glue it. Finish it. Okay? And I'm going to, once I get it glued, I'm going to decide where, decide where I'm going to put the, the, the pins to, to line it up on both sides of the match plate and drill it while it's all nice and lined up correctly. And because if you try to drill it, it could move off. This way it's going to be perfect because when you put it through to three quarters of an inch, if, if it's slightly off center, it can go off center. And then what happens is the parts shift, see? So now we're line up all our parts. Here we are, the two halves, the four little pieces of pineapple, look like pineapple. And then, uh, now, this does not have, this does not have draft on it anywhere. So, I got to put draft on everything, and I didn't do, put the draft on because when I put it in the milling machine to do this, uh, I don't want it to be cocking all over the place. Okay, so we're going to fix that. And, all right, coming. A lot of work, my friends, a lot of work. Anybody says that pattern ain't worth $2,000 is minimum. Minimum, two, three thousand dollars dollars pattern maker would charge you to do this. I should have, I should, just for the heck of it, I should go take that picture and take it to a pattern maker and say, listen, I'm thinking about having this made. And get a quote, quote, and tell them to put it on a match plate, 14, 18 board, and, and, and see what he comes up with. That, I think that'd be pretty pretty good idea. I think I'm going to do that. And uh, next time I, I had to go out to uh, the, the Bronze Foundry, which is out near Heightstown, New Jersey, I'll, st I'll stop in the pattern maker over there and say, listen, I want to make this. How much does it cost? And uh, let them get back to me. I'm just curious to see how much it's actually going to cost. So anyway, next time you see this, it'll be all glued up and ready to go, and uh, we'll take it from that point.